So we're going to be using the free open source firewall called PFSense. So go in and download that. You can go into Google and type in PFSense in the search and you want to go to www.pfsense.org. Once your website opens, you can see uh, a little bit more about the software. You can navigate through the different options if you want to learn more about it. And to download, it's the top right corner. You then want to select the file install type, which is install. We're not going to be doing an upgrade. We're doing a fresh new install. And then your actual operating system architecture or your CPU architecture. Then we're going to select the architecture, which is 64-bit or 32 gig. Even though it does say AMD 64-bit, that is also available for Intel. So we just select AMD 64, make sure it's at 64-bit. If you are going to be using hardware that is 64-bit, we always recommend that you use a 64-bit version. And the platform will be ISO. So ISO is generally the most compatible version. Uh, you can put this onto a USB stick later, onto a CD. And you can also use it for booting if you're using a virtualized environment such as VMware or Citrix. Uh, you can actually use that ISO to boot. So we're going to download the ISO and click on download. All right, so the download has now finished. You'll see that it's on my desktop, which is this big one here, ISO.gz. Then it's going to extract it to this ISO just here. The next step for you is then to burn that to a CD if you want to install it on a computer and you can boot it from that CD or from a USB stick if you want to make that USB stick bootable and actually go ahead and install PFSense. We're going to be using a VMware environment. So I've got a ESXi host, an actual computer that's been configured with ESXi and I'm going to boot this ISO and actually install PFSense as a virtual machine or a virtual server. So here I am logged into vSphere. What I want to do is right click and create a new virtual machine. We're going to click on typical and type in pfSense and next. Then I'm going to select where do I want to save this ISO. So I'm going to click on a particular storage that I've got allocated. You will allocate whatever you need to allocate it to. Next, I'm going to say the guest operating system is other. Okay, and down here, I'm just going to say other 64 bit and I'm just going to call it PFSense as the OS. It really doesn't matter what you select, but it's just going to standardize a few things. How many NICs do you want to connect? So I'm going to say two NICs. The reason I select two is because PFSense will need two NICs or two network cards, one for the WAN and one for the LAN. So just be mindful of that, selecting two when you're configuring PFSense. And how big do you want the virtual disk to be? Okay, I'm going to select to be 40 gig. You can expand that at a later stage if you so choose to. Next and finish. So here is my PFSense that's been created, a simple ISO. I can now right click on it and say edit settings. All right, so I'm going to adjust the memory of my PFSense to the minimum recommended, which is going to be one gig. All right, I'm going to leave my CPUs as is, but yeah, as, you, as I mentioned before, you can shut down this VM at any time and actually go and adjust the memory and the CPU accordingly. So you can add more CPUs and more RAM if you so choose to in future. So we're going to say OK to this. Now we're going to right click on the PFSense VM and say open console. All right, that's essentially going to open up this console here. And now we click on the power on. Now obviously we haven't uh, connected this um, VM to anything yet. So it doesn't understand that it needs to connect to an ISO. So what we first need to do is now point this VM to the ISO that we downloaded, the PFSense ISO that we downloaded so that it can boot from that ISO and then you can start installing PFSense. So while it's in this mode, you can click on this little CD option, the little CD button, select on that and then you've got a few different options here. You can connect to the ISO on your local disk, which is what we're going to be doing. So we're going to navigate to our desktop on this computer, which is where that ISO was downloaded and then we can boot that ISO straight from there. Alternatively, you can copy the ISO to a data store inside your VMware environment. 
Uh, we won't go through the steps on how to copy it to a data store in this demonstration, but that option is also available. So let's just connect to ISO on local disk. I'm now going to go to my desktop, which I am right here, and here is my ISO. I can select it and say open. So that is now mounted, and you can press enter and escape on your keyboard there a few times to actually force it to boot. It's going to automatically boot in a few seconds. You can space bar to pause it and then actually select some different options if you want, or you can just let it go through and start the initial install and configuration. So now we're presented with the configure console screen and you've got a few different options here regarding changing the video font, screen map, key map, accept these settings. We're going to just leave all these as default and say accept. And now it's going to give you an option about how you want to perform the install. You can do a quick easy install or you can customize your install as well, as well as rebooting and exiting. Uh, for the purpose of this, we're just going to do a quick and easy install which is just going to install some basic defaults and configs that you need. Easy install will automatically install without asking any questions. It's going to erase the content of that hard drive, which we allocated before. So you can select OK if you are happy with that. It's now going to start to install PFSense onto that hard drive on your VM in VMware vSphere. It's going to ask me now to install the kernel. We're going to leave it as the standard kernel. So now the machine is going to restart. So it's actually completed or you can return to selected tasks or just go ahead and reboot it as normal and you should be good to go. Take note of the default admin password, admin and pfSense is the password. And we'll start to load the config again and then we have to perform some further configurations. This will include setting up of a VLAN, a virtual LAN if you so choose to, which in this scenario, we're gonna say no. So you'll see just here, it's gonna ask me to set up a VLAN as an option if you want to. You can configure this later on if you so require, but for the purpose of this, we're just gonna say no. Now we need to enter the WAN interface name. So you'll remember that we configured two LANs or two NICs on this VM. So one will be used for WAN and one will be used for LAN. So then we just got a few examples here. LE0 for the WAN interface and then LE1 for the LAN interface. Okay. Enter the optional one interface name or A for auto detect, A or nothing if finished. All right, so we're just going to leave that blank for that optional. So you'll see that the interface there will be set up as WAN as LE1, uh, LE0, excuse me, and LAN as LE1. All right, so LAN0 and LAN1, WAN and LAN. Do you want to proceed? Yes, and OK. That will now continue some further configuration. And there you have it. So that is now configured your PFSense. You'll see that the WAN IP has been defined. In this case is 172.16.1.51. And that is because I've got my DHCP enabled. So you would obviously go and configure your WAN IP manually. And the same deal with your LAN IP. Go and configure that manually as well. You want to be able to set static IPs for both your WAN and your LAN. So once you've set your static IP, or if you choose to leave it as dynamic using DHCP, it should be as easy as opening up a web browser, typing in the IP address of your new PFSense server, your LAN IP address, and you should be presented with your login screen for your PFSense portal. So from within here, you literally put in your username and password, log in, and then you've got full access into PFSense and you can start doing all the configuration nice and easy. So that is my summary. I hope you found it helpful. I'd love it if you commented below if you did find this helpful and if you want any further help, and we'll talk to you next time. So if you found that video helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel, Digital Byte Computing, just on the button there for more videos.